Today's episode of Necronomapod is brought to you by Beardology. There are a lot of imitators out there, but there's only one place I buy my beard oil. Beardology beard oil nourishes your skin and won't leave you with that greasy feel. With over 17 cents available in their extensive product line, I trust my beard to Beardology. You can find Beardology at beardology.co. Use code NECRO15 to receive 15% off your purchase. Beardology, discover the best way to avoid the shave. Bestiality, rape, murder, blood drinking, and a whole lot of cum. Peter Curtin is the definition of sadistic. On today's show, we tell the story of the vampire of Dusseldorf, Peter Curtin. As you've probably already guessed, he had an abusive childhood. We'll also talk about what led to his sexual interest in animals and his obsession with human blood. Peter Curtin didn't care whether his victims lived or died. He just wanted to hear them bleed and then get off to the sound of their blood pouring onto the ground. We'll detail some of these incidents and the arrogant, almost proud way Curtin committed these heinous acts of violence. Also, we'll talk about how he had to try hard not to continuously come at his own trial. As ACDC once said, if you want blood, you've got it. I'm Mike. I'm Ian. And I'm Dave. If you've ever ejaculated instantly while murdering a pussy, (coughs) cat, stick around. You've got something in common with tonight's despicable subject of discussion. This is Necronomapod. When we talk about sexual sadist, from the standpoint, when you're dealing with a sexual sadist, is that they will inflict either psychological or physical pain on the victim. Not because they enjoy inflicting the pain, but as they enjoy the suffering that the victim is going through. And so when you look at this type of an individual, the question always comes up as to whether or not it's genetics that create these monsters or whether or not it's the environment that creates these monsters. And I personally believe that it's a combination of both characteristics that come into play here. Well, it's been seven days, we're still alive. The Flat Earth Society did not take us out. They didn't kill us. We are currently in hiding, though. Well, they don't know where we're at. We're in a bunker. (laughs) I think we only made one person mad, right? Who was that? The person that wrote Unfucking Followed. Yeah, but I don't know, because then they started liking all the posts after that of people, like, rolling their eyes, or, like, me, or or, uh, the show indicating, Uh, like, I hope you listen. Like, I I think they might have been joking. I don't know. We really didn't get any heat for that. I think they thought you were promoting a flat earth in yeah. your posts. <laughs> well, maybe the, some people the, were confused. What do you mean? <laughs> me? This is the Necronomapod <laughs> account. I yeah. was on vacation all week. It one of me. that post of the, um, which one was it? The, uh, you, you might be brainwashed if, mm-hmm. is our second most liked post ever behind one of Richard Ramirez. Hmm. We got so many people liking that that don't even follow the show. But they must have just popped up through whatever algorithms and the it's part the of our outreach. hashtags. Like but it. they fucking love the flat Earth post, and the episode's mm-hmm. doing fantastic. I wonder how many people of those were actual flat Earth. Yeah, and they're like love. That, they're loving that we post it. Yeah, yeah. And then they listen to it, and we're calling them morons. That and, might be it. Yeah, <laughs> we didn't get any shit though. We didn't get as much, as much shit as we thought. So if people are no. liking it, they're not doing their due diligence and listening to us. We're okay with that. Shit all over the Earth. And Dave, you recently did a little bit of traveling. You didn't fall off the earth. I uh, know. I, I did not. You didn't see Saw the ice her. caps? No ice caps. No Jon Snow guarding the uh, ice walls surrounding the planet. Okay. And you even flew in an airplane, so. I did. But to, but the airplane didn't have to move, right? It just went up. And it went up. Went the earth spun around on the disc, <laughs> and then we sat back down. Yeah. Correct. And that was it. Yeah. That was it. That's how air travel works. <laughs> Solid theory there. Yeah. So anyways, if you haven't checked it out, check out our Flat Earth episode from last week. Um, We enjoyed it. It seems to be doing pretty well. People seem to be liking it. A very popular F. Mary Kill segment to open that show. Controversial, (laughs) depending on your thoughts. Uh, Great episode! (laughs) The people involved. There's a little teaser. 
Also, if you haven't seen, we have merchandise available. Um, the links are available if you check out our Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, necronomapod.com. There's a merch section. We have uh, different designs for you to pick out from. Some sweet uh, a Mr. Muggs uh, design that's pretty awesome, an abduction shirt, and then, of course, our Necro logo. We're taking pre-orders right now. Probably going to take pre-orders for the next maybe two more weeks or so. And then in early September, we're going to get those off to the printer. So if you put in a pre-order, thank you so much. We appreciate it. And uh, we'll have those to you as soon as possible. But we're going to open up the pre-orders for another couple weeks before we get those off to the printers. So um, go check them out and uh, let us know your thoughts and go ahead and buy one or two or all of them if you feel inclined. Yeah, huge thank you. Great uh, Christmas presents. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or Halloween, Halloween presents. Halloween presents. Labor Day presents. Thanksgiving presents even, too. <laughs> I like my turkeys with a t-shirt in it. <laughs> Who wouldn't want to carve into a Mr. Muggs uh, turkey? Jim Jones would have, of course. Ooh, too soon. I know. So we got the good stuff out of the way. Let's talk about some shitty stuff, Ian. Yeah, let's get into uh, let's get into Peter Curtin tonight. This guy is... Uh, He's a savage. Just a very evil human yeah. being. Probably the most just downright evil person we've talked about so far, I would say. He's once again topped the list. All these people that we have where every every week we're like, this is the most sadistic person we've talked about. This guy sucks. This person sucks. And yet again, we've topped the list. Yeah, this, We keep managing to find the scum of the earth. It's our duty. Yeah, right? So Peter Curtin was born into a poor and abusive family in Mulheim, Rain. Uh, Germany on May 26th, 1883. Um, and he was the third of 13 children. Catholic, huh? <laughs> two, of, two of the 13 children would die at an early age, leaving Peter to be the oldest. Both of his parents were alcoholics and his father was extremely angry and violent. So with Peter be, being the oldest, his father would take his anger out on him. There were times that Peter would be just beaten bloody and then forced to watch his uh, his father rape his mother and sisters. And even sometimes Peter would be on the receiving end of the sexual abuse from his dad. So we can agree it was not an idyllic childhood no. experience. Not very pleasant. No. no. In 1894, Peter's father was arrested for committing incest and then he was sent to prison for 15 months. And shortly after this, shortly after he was sentenced, Peter's mother remarried and moved to Dusseldorf, Germany. Probably the next day. Right. She's getting the fuck out of there. (laughs) 15 months for incest. It's not a lot of time. No, but we're talking, what, 1894? I don't know what the rules are exactly. I don't know. Dave, what were they back then? (laughs) Pretty lenient, I guess. They should have just emigrated to West Virginia and they they wouldn't have to worry about it. But it would have been fine. (laughs) The fact that we still have listeners in West Virginia baffles me and Florida. Yeah, I never looked at our Florida numbers. See, if sure. you listen and you're from Florida, just unsubscribe now. You're not welcome here. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I'm hot, kidding. Hot takes over here. <laughs> Even the panhandle? Can they stay? <laughs> Peter claimed to have uh, committed his first murder at nine years old, and there is some evidence to support that claim. So Peter- he was an early bloomer. Yeah. Peter was invited to go rafting on a river with two of his friends. As they were rafting, Peter pushed one of the boys into the water just to see what would happen. So the other boy jumped into the river to try and save the one that Peter had pushed in. And when this kid realized that he couldn't save the other one and started to get tired, he tried to climb back onto the raft. That was when Peter just casually held the boy's head under the water until he drowned. So, you know, just casually killing your friend yeah well two of them he pushed the one both of them That's drowned in yeah. so double murder at nine years old said johnny cash song i drowned a boy in dusseldorf <laughs> just to watch him die <laughs> that's pretty good in person yeah, yeah. it was good when peter was found later alone on the raft he was crying and and acting upset and he told the police that the boys had fallen into the river And they ruled that these two deaths were accidental, which makes sense. I mean, you wouldn't think that this kid killed. Yeah, a nine-year-old. Right. Not going to be a suspect. But Peter said that he realized with this incident that he could talk his way out of anything if he only showed the emotions and responses that people were looking for. So uh, pretty empty at nine years old already. Yeah, to figure out that. 
Yeah, learning how to replicate the emotions of an actual human being. <laughs> right. <laughs> I wonder if he saw some of that from his dad when he got arrested for the incest. If his dad like showed remorse and they went easier on him, you know, and that's how he mm-hmm. learned that. Oh, if I show these feelings, like I'm sorry, or if I'm scared, you you know, you get treated differently. Good point. Yeah, I don't know the whole. Um, you would be born a sociopath, but. Nature, nurture. Yeah, argument. I mean, that's some extreme stuff to mm-hmm. go through to watch your dad rape your sisters and then rape you yeah. every once in a while. All right. so. And again, all of this knowledge is based on, you know, his interviews with police. So it's still subject to him, you he, know, telling it, the truth. Right. Yeah. I mean, he could have been. Was well, that did get in, arrested for incest, but he could have been making up some of it, yeah. you know. For, you know who didn't get arrested? Hilmer. <laughs> <laughs> he did not. Whose dad was that? Uh, David Berg. That's right. He had to jerk off in front of him. That's right. <laughs> Old David Berg. He had to finish. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's right. completion. <laughs> but that was bait because of mom, right? That was his punishment. For mom him. would force him to, to finish in front of his dad. As punishment. Hilmer. Yeah. Hilmer. Hilmer. I think those Hilmer gets home. <laughs> So, also at nine years old... Peter- Notice Ian didn't say the name once. He's trying <laughs> to move past that. Move on, asshole. <laughs> Kilmer. There it is. Swedish Ian's back. <laughs> the crowd's going nuts right now as they're listening in their cars. So, also at nine years old, Peter had become friends with a man who was a dog catcher that lived in his apartment building. Dog catchers back then didn't take dogs to animal shelters when they caught them. They killed them and sold the meat to butchers and then sold the lard to doctors to help heal wounds. So this... I thought that's how Wiener Schnitzel was created. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, it is. (laughs) So this guy would bring Peter into what he was doing with the dogs that he was catching. This dog catcher would torture and mutilate the dogs before killing them. And then after they were dead... He would have sex with the corpses and just laugh hysterically like this was the the time of his life. Like a lot of good uh, role models in this kid's life. Between this, this is so out of control. I mean, the dad thing is is really bad, but this is like I, just trying to picture the scene in my head is just outrageous to picture someone just yeah. laughing like a maniac <laughs> while they're fucking a dead dog. <laughs> like, that's nuts. <laughs> can we just think of a new shirt, a new shirt idea? <laughs> well, did you guys see the trailer they're making for the movie about Peter Curtin and his special time with the dog? Catcher? No, no. I, I saw the trailer the other day. It said there was uh, in a world fraught with danger and despair, overrun with stray wiener dogs. One man chose to rise above the rest and take a stand. This summer experienced a heartwarming tale of a devoted dog catcher who changed the life of a sweet nine-year-old boy forever. They caught him, they killed him, and they fucked him. The Deutsche Dachshund Whisperer, coming this summer to silent movie theaters near you. (laughs) (laughs) I thought you were going to say something about a for real movie for a second. (laughs) We'll get us back on track from that. That's that's going to be a Academy Award blockbuster, I imagine. Sounds great. Yeah. (laughs) Step aside, Susan Sarandon. This one's coming in to win all the the gold or whatever the fuck you want at the Academy Awards. Trophies. What do they get Oscars. Out? Oscars. Yeah, but but are they made of gold? Are they just statues? Who fucking cares? Go on, Ian. They're probably made of plastic. I don't mm-hmm. know. Come on. I don't think they're gold. <laughs> no, they're not gold. <laughs> are they gold colored? Yes. Oh, they might That's be gold plated. Of. That's what I'm thinking mm-hmm. of. Whatever. Who cares? That's way too much Academy Awards talk. So this whole dog thing being exposed to this, this would begin a adolescence of bestiality for peter at 13 he would make the correlation between sex and violence for the first time peter said that he was trying he that he broke into a barn and was trying to have sex with a sheep but the sheep wouldn't sit still so peter got mad and stabbed it bad boy <laughs> so this caused uh in stabbing this the sheep and seeing it bleed caused Peter to immediately ejaculate. Of course. So later, Peter would also say that ejaculating while not hard was the best way to do it. Well, hmm, interesting. That is that's very a, interesting. That's a thing. Yeah. And Can you it, search for that on Pornhub? <laughs> what would you what, type? Uh, limp dick coming? <laughs> I don't know. What do, you, what do you search for that? Yeah, that would hmm. be... I didn't even know that was really possible. 
I mean, I'm sure, I guess it is, but who thinks of stuff like that? Because the orgasm really originates in your mind. So that would your be trigger responses are that powerful. You don't even need to be hard. I mean, I guess That'd be my guess. Yeah. I mean, just stabbing something and then just immediately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have so many questions about it, but I don't want to have a conversation about this. So <laughs> we can go ahead and move on. I don't want to go down that road right now. Well, and he said that it wasn't the act of murder that would get him off. It was the sight and sound of flowing blood. That's so odd. Yeah, it's a he very... He should have been a phlebotomist at the Red Cross or something. Man, he would have been done for. Yeah. The people would Just have been done for. loads all over all day long. <laughs> blood and cum all over. <laughs> so, so when he was d- given his uh, his confession and stuff, he detailed some instances throughout his life that caused this leading up to murder. At 14 years old, he broke a squirrel's neck. There's a nut joke here somewhere, but it's it's just not coming to me. (laughs) I think it's it's there. That's it. One time, he just saw an injured horse bleeding to death on the side of the road. And he just came? Yeah, just he just saw it and just... (laughs) Equine ejaculation. Equinolation. 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 To go with trapaculation. (laughs) This can be a shirt. We're going to have trapaculation, equinolation, <laughs> and two other ones we think of. <laughs> then on the back, cum for Necronomapod. <laughs> oh, boy. But we'll spill cum like the, the appropriate way. K-U-M? Of course. <laughs> so, and then this, this third one is just completely outrageous. One night he was walking through a park when he saw a sleeping swan. So he grabbed it, cut its head off, and then drank blood coming from its neck. And then immediately ejaculated. <laughs> this guy think he is obviously. <laughs> and I think going through because I stopped writing that after a while in this outline. It's you can assume after every one of his violent acts, he immediately whether they gets die off. or not, because he once the blood is there, right? He, he gets off. Same end result. Hmm. But it's like what you said about like the mental trigger. That has to be like an intense fetish. Oh, God, yeah. To just seeing something and you just and you uh, uncontrollably, it. it's pretty wild. Maybe we can condition Mike somehow to, <laughs> like, that we say a trigger word and he automatically comes in his pants. You mean that like, would be great for our live shows, like, you, you in mean a like, couple years. You mean, like, saying Britney Spears? <laughs> Challenge accepted. <laughs> I mean, but, I mean, that, like, that would be insane, yeah. It'd be a lot of fun. <laughs> to, to, <laughs> just to, can you imagine if you could do that to someone, though? Like, if you could say a word and know that they're just coming in their pants because you said that word? That would be fantastic. Mm-hmm. Like, every white girl with pumpkin spice lattes, and then they just immediately get wet in their panties. <laughs> <laughs> you think I'm kidding. I'm not. It's almost that season, fellas. Goody. Watch out. I've already seen stuff online. Watch about- the floor in Starbucks. Yeah, it's wet. slippery. <laughs> Doesn't McDonald's do something too, like a pumpkin know. McFlurry or no? They, they do the Shamrock Shakes. People love those. Those are that, good. I've never had. That. Is it just mint or is it? Yeah, it's not as good as it used to be. They and and here's them. our fast food talk for the week. <laughs> they changed it up. I, I've never had one. Like back when I was a young man, <laughs> the Shamrock Shakes were much. Used better. to call me forty nine cents for a cheeseburger <laughs> fine shake. <laughs> Somewhere along the line, they're not as good as they used to be. This coming March, I will try one. Maybe even on mm-hmm. air. A little taste review. Like the Domino's one. The fans are holding their breath. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> They can't wait for that. I'm sure. <laughs> so at 16, uh, Peter received a job as an apprentice molder, but he decided to just run away from home. So he broke into the place where he worked, stole 300 marks, and, and just took off. Peter was caught four days after this theft, and this would begin a life of crime for him and just in and out of prison. From did they, did they have follow the spooge trail to try to get out? Just getting off at the thrill of stealing <laughs> shit. From 1900 to 1904, Peter was in and out of prison for theft, and then in 1904, he committed a series of barn arsons that, le- that landed him an eight-year sentence in prison. According the barn ar- the, the the barn arsons that's kind of mm-hmm. random and weird. But what this, did he get off on with well, the arson? His thing was just to cause problems for people. So it wasn't still sexual yet at this point. The fires like, were never sexual for and, him. But that's what I'm asking. Why do it if you're not getting like 
for him, he was getting off on some of these horrendous. Well, I think he got her- off on killing horrendous. the animals and having, like uh-huh. hearing or watching them burn up. To, in the, in okay. Yeah. So probably that. Yeah. And then it's I a just mixture said heinous. Of... That is not a word. That's a mix of horrendous and, and heinous. Heinous. These heinous crimes. Well, he's a and then he, like because he would hide and just watch people's reaction to seeing yeah. their shit burning down. Okay, that makes know? sense. Yeah, I just you know if you want to see blood, you're not going to burn somebody. So I'm, I was just wondering the connection there. But if he's likes watching the torture and people being upset and seeing this and hearing maybe the animals yeah. suffer. That That's what sense. I was saying in the beginning, how like he's just a straight up evil guy. He's he a just... heranous person. <laughs> <laughs> so according to Peter, prison was the place that made him who he was. Um, not the dog catcher. It was prison. Yeah. Or the, or killing how, the two kids dare, or not. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you dare belittle that dog catcher. <laughs> He's just over there fucking dogs, laughing his ass off. And he enjoys his job, okay? He's having a good time. Yeah, I'm sure it, it took a special person to be a dog catcher back then if you're just slaughtering dogs all day long. Probably attracted Takes some. some kind of person. Yeah. But, uh, but Peter, he wouldn't talk about why his time in prison was so bad. The only thing he said was that it caused him to be so, quote, dedicated to revenge. And he said the only thing he thought about during this time was killing everyone in the world. That's a big plan. Yeah. And I, I can't imagine prison in uh, the early 1900s in Germany was very good. So I can only imagine. Well, you see some of the photos of this guy and uh, he resembles a certain historical figure who yes, wanted to kill most people in the world also. <laughs> he does. <laughs> he does. Especially with that mustache. Yeah. Looks just like Hitler. When Peter was released, he went right back to theft, breaking into houses for money. And he said this wasn't like a thrill like his other things. He was just generally trying to get money. Mm, Okay. Because they just kicked him out of jail. They just said, all right, you're gone. Get out of here. So this was not about coming. This was just about being purely financial gain. (laughs) Right. On May 25th, 1913, Peter broke into a tavern in the town of Milheim Rain. And came across nine-year-old Christine Klein while she was asleep in her bed. He said that he was breaking in here to 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 just get money, but came across this this little girl. Peter strangled her and then slit her throat twice with a pocket knife, and then ejaculated as soon as he heard the sound of her blood hitting the floor. That's pretty vile. Yeah, and it was like you said, it's just a crime of opportunity. He just. Mm saw her sleeping and so the next day peter specifically went to have a beer at the tavern across the street from the one that he committed this murder in, just so he could see and hear the reactions of people that they were having to this girl's murder and that's what we were talking Homeboy about needs to watch out that's ed kemper's gimmick just going and drinking at the police bar yeah i know ed kemper was much later than this but but that's part of the profile now, right? Going, like going get, back to the scene yeah. of the crime. Well, and Kemper's wasn't the scene of the crime necessarily. It was just the police bar, right? Because he liked to hear... The cops talking, and he was right. friends with them. Yeah. Yeah. Hear them get, did the, like, you know, just chit-chat about whatever they're investigating and talking about the shit. Right. And bumble, something but. different I did, speaking of Ed Kemper, that I found out about him, is he did go, like to go back to the crime scenes. He said he just liked to like feel the dirt and shit. Like there was just some thrill in being able to grab the dirt and that was on Mine Hunters, wasn't it? Didn't they have that scene on Mine Hunters? Yeah. Like he was talked about that. Season two. I yeah. think that was just season two, yeah. I saw that clip. I was passing oh, did by when someone in my mm-hmm. household was watching it and oh, I yeah. happened to see that. Yeah, he's just talking and, about grabbing the dirt. Yeah, I remember seeing that I scene. I think Dennis Rader, the same thing we just talked about a couple weeks ago, right? Revisiting the scene of the crime. Yeah, almost all these guys. At or, least... uh, Gary, sorry, Gary Ridgway. Oh, yeah. Dennis Rader. Yeah. Ridgway did what? Well, he would go back. He'd leave, leave the pose the corpses and he'd go back That's and right. hang out where he Oh, yeah, he put them in stuff. sexual positions and yeah. stuff. Yeah. I was getting him mixed up with uh, who's the orange coat? Um, Richard Chase. Richard Chase. Because he he was just so random. He was he just, just a shoot very... the guy getting groceries out of his, his mm-hmm. driveway. He was just mental illness completely unchecked yeah. and yeah. just out of control. Yeah, like Ridgeway would take his wife and bang her like out they go camping right next stuff, to the site right? of where yeah. he'd yeah. put the bodies and stuff. That was yeah. a bonus episode from earlier this month, way once upon a time. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I, th- I think the majority of these guys go back or... And we'll actually, we're going to get into it right here. 
so like we said with the barn stuff, he just liked to see like this destruction that he caused. And after a funeral, after the funeral was held for Christine Klein, Peter would occasionally visit her grave. And when he would pick up the dirt that was covering her grave, he would just immediately ejaculate. So. This is insanity, this <laughs> yeah. story. That's so wild. This guy's dry cleaning bill must have been outrageous. <laughs> you think he had enough time to prepare, like to open up and get it out? Or is it just right in his pants? Probably right in his pants. Well, he because when he went out to do anything, he was like full blown in a full suit and everything. Like he looked perfect. That was part of his. That's right. His deal. But even when he would go back to the scene like this, yeah. Anytime he left, he was like perfectly dressed. Well, he said that's the preferred way is to blow it soft, right? Mm-hmm. So there you go. But you can't control that, can you? Do you think like even him driving to the scene of the incident wouldn't that get him excited? Like he's foreplaying himself true, almost, true. like knowing what you're going to go see. Maybe he was impotent and this was the only way he got That's the, Maybe he could not achieve an erection. God, we need a fucking Blue Chew sponsor right now to <laughs> drop into this episode. <laughs> Blue Chew, please pay us. <laughs> we'll use your dick pills. <laughs> God damn. This episode was made for Blue Chew. Yeah, it really was. <laughs> So this was the first um, confirmed murder that Peter committed, and this only left him wanting to do it more and and experiment with other ways to kill. So he's got a taste now. He's going to ramp it up. Yeah, and this is weird from just like a serial killer perspective. I mean, it, it, he says it's his first kill, but I kind of wonder if it really was because he just went for, this is like going for the gold right off the bat. A sexual... Point child murder right away you think there's stuff he left out maybe ramping up to this yeah maybe there i mean he had the nine-year-old one but Mm -hmm. just seems like a really far leap compared to some other yeah you know but who knows but again it's still dependent on the accuracy of the stories Mm -hmm. he told later right one saturday night peter left his house with a hatchet that he called his chopper Peter spotted a woman in her 20s walking into a building alone. And right as she was opening the door, Peter hit her in the back of the head with the blunt end of the hatchet and knocked her out. And he just took off and ran away. And that's something we'll see with him is he's not always killing people. He's just going up and hitting them by surprise, hurting them, then taking off. It's just about... Do you think he's getting off on that as well? I think it's just this thing of just... Uh, causing chaos or and like testing what he can and can't do and right. get away with and hmm. do you ever see those gonzo porno movies where guys just run up to girls <laughs> on the street and, and blow a load all over them he would have been great for those no i have <laughs> you to love those i didn't even know this was a thing wait so what happens i mean they're, they're staged clearly but they're made to look like you know amateur like girls gonzo are just walking movies. down the street yeah a guy will run up like <laughs> taking care of himself around the corner and runs up and just shoots a load on her and they act like they're appalled. They're like, ah, ah. Yeah, it's really funny. <laughs> right now, everyone is googling Gonzo porn. <laughs> what do they call though? There's including a name for me. Him, I think I can't remember. I don't know. <laughs> he okay. would be good for that. Yeah. For that thing. Yeah. The guy was born too early. <laughs> the problem is he wouldn't be able to come unless he hurt one of them. Though that's the thing. <laughs> you have to beat him in the head till they bled, and they just be like, oh, "Oh, sorry, I was limp. Didn't even have to touch myself." <laughs> Don't I look good in my suit? Hey, Pod Van Dam. What do they, they call those movies? <laughs> <laughs> he just spit out his beard. <laughs> <laughs> just spit that off. <laughs> I wonder if our friends at Pod Van Dam know what those are called. <laughs> Ed, get back to us, please. <laughs> So the um, the next month, Peter walked up to a man that was sitting on a bench, but this time he just hit him in the head with the, he hit him in the head with the sharp end of the hatchet, and instead of running away, he hid and watched the blood flow from the man's head, which caused him to ejaculate. <laughs> <laughs> Both of these people survived um, the woman he attacked, and then this guy, and Peter would try once more on a sleeping teenage girl but her father woke up and peter dropped the hatchet and jumped out the window so he almost got so caught. was peter yeah. the first juggalo <laughs> <laughs> their little hatchet man logo 
Maybe he inspired so it. So Juggalos date back to what? The 19th century Germany? <laughs> Did we just discover the Sounds first right. the first Joker's card? <laughs> just saying. Anyways. We work a lot of Juggalo references. 14% of our listeners are going to get that joke. <laughs> the rest are like, what the fuck are they talking about? We, we gotta, There's a bonus episode on Juggalos. Aren't they considered a gang nowadays? I believe so. We'll do an yeah, episode on that. They were categorized as a gang. Or the gathering of the Juggalos. We should, like, we've talked about going to it. Wasn't not in Ohio this year. It still wasn't far, probably. I don't know. Right? Like, was. they usually go, like, Michigan or Indiana yeah. or, you know, Dayton or something. It's clearly a Midwestern to- thing you mean they don't have these in like north dakota <laughs> they got kicked out of ohio they, they used to have it in nelson's ledges is that where it was mm-hmm. i know they got they at least had one there and they got kicked out because mm. they fucking trashed the place what would you expect to happen yeah <laughs> stunning revelation yeah. They, they... everyone rolls up in their cutlasses with their hatchet man <laughs> on the back window yep just trash and shit Spray paint in their face. <laughs> no, you can't use spray paint. You can't use spray paint, though. In the documentary. Oh, he did. That's what doing? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I used to wear ICP makeup. I didn't wear it. Like, for Halloween, I did it. But we used, like, legit makeup. I wouldn't put spray paint on my face. Maybe you can post that as the next follow-up pic to your NASCAR high school uh, picture. Hey, people love that picture. Men and women told me they involuntarily came to that photo. <laughs> <laughs> nobody told me that nobody told me that so these uh these two incidents would be the last time peter would attempt anything for years because in 1914 he was drafted to serve in world war one peter deserted before he saw a day of combat and spent the entirety of world war one plus an extra three years in a military prison until 1921 after being released from the military prison Peter reconnected with one of his sisters where he met his future wife, Augusta. Does that mean this was a friend of his sister? Yeah. Right. So Augusta had shot and killed a local gardener that she was dating in 1911. Um, they had dated for five years and he suddenly broke up with her. So yeah. she was like, fuck that. <laughs> You're not breaking up with me. So she spent five years in prison for this crime. So when Peter came into the picture, her his sister was trying to get Augusta hooked up with somebody and it sounded like no one wanted to date her because she killed her previous boyfriend so very Solid logic right? yeah <laughs> um but they went on a couple of dates and after one of one of the first ones Augusta said she didn't she wouldn't sleep with Peter and Peter just said that flat out that he would kill her if she didn't <laughs> And I believe, if I remember correctly, it was that and they he, both fell in love with each other at that moment. Right. But I, if I remember correctly, that he just said, "I'll like stab you in your ribs, or like in, in your ribs, whatever. I'll kill oh, you." Very jokingly, oh, I'll just stab you in your ribs if you don't go out with me. Yeah, I and didn't. I'll finish immediately. So, and she's like, "I love you. I'll well, kill you if you don't take me out." Kindred souls. Well, they got married in 1923, and. This uh, this pattern of, of abuse would go on with Augusta until until Peter was arrested for his crimes because some of the, some stuff like paints him as um, kind of like BTK like he was normal at home but he was mm-hmm. like crazy out there and that's not according to anything any books or anything about him he was would beat the shit out of her and rape her and stuff like he was just as much of a piece of shit at home as does she have any idea what he was up to I don't think so no. Okay. Peter didn't go back to public crimes until he returned to Dusseldorf in 1925. As soon as he got back to Dusseldorf, it was like it was go time for him. Hmm. He raped four women between 1925 and 1928. And also during this time, he committed 32 cases of arson around Dusseldorf. And that was barn sheds. Barns again. Yeah. Hmm. His first intended attempt at murder came on February 3rd, 1929. During his lunch break at a factory he was that he was working at, Peter just decided that this was the day it was it was time to kill someone. And it was gonna be a woman or a child, just whichever one he saw first. Oh, okay. So that's scary. Just to be like the, the randomness yeah. stuff is, is scary. Which I think is we talked about we talked yeah. about that during uh Richard Chase, just how random he was with who he picked, let alone just uh, uh, the first woman or child I mm-hmm. see. 
Well, then that's four years. I mean, he moved back there in 20, 1925. So, I mean, he was committing crimes, but then four years later, 1929, he's just working and he's like, all right, today's the day I'm going to, I'm going to kill someone. I think he just held it in as long as he could. Maybe. Hmm. Yeah. I, I think so. that's why he was doing all that testing stuff, hitting people in the back of the heads. Like he could have killed those people. He didn't. I think he was building up to, to yeah. that seeing what excited him, what got him off, what he can get away with. And after how many freaking, what, 30 some arsons, yeah. I, was, I wasn't doing the job anymore. Right. So after he got off work, Peter spotted a young woman named Maria Kuhn. He grabbed her from behind and pulled her behind some bushes. And before she could scream, Peter covered her mouth and pulled out a pair of scissors. He stabbed her 24 times and then ran and just took off and ran away. But she, luckily, she survived the attack. Jeez. 24, 24 times with scissors. Damn. Yeah. Load or no load? A load. Okay. I th- it's safe to say, like I said before, <laughs> there's, yeah. What did you ask? Blown if he loads. blew a load or oh. if he didn't. Load or no load. <laughs> I thought you said lobe or no lobe. And I was like, what the fuck is he talking about? And of course he didn't stab her ear lobe. Who stabs an ear lobe? No, he definitely blew a load. So, and then we move to February 9th, 1929. Peter found eight year old Rosa Olinger playing, playing alone in her front yard. He grabbed her, covered her mouth, and took her to some nearby woods. He choked her unconscious and then stabbed her 13 times, including once into the left temple. Peter put his mouth on the temple stab wound and drank the blood that was flowing out of the girl's head. And then he just cleaned up a bit and went to the movies like nothing happened. This is a whole new level. Yeah, and the way he said that, described it was that, you know, he was like cleaning himself off. Because he pri- he took pride in the fact that he could do this and not get blood all over yeah. him. Like he was a surgeon. Yeah. yeah. But so he just cleaned himself up a little bit and like put his hand in his pocket and found a movie ticket he had. And he was like, oh, all right. I guess I will go to the movies. That sounds like a good idea. Just. This is a really it's horrifying wild. story. Yeah. After the movie was over, Peter went back to set the girl's body on fire. But since it was getting to nighttime and there were too many people around, he decided just to go home. At 6 a.m. the next morning, he told his wife he was going to the bathroom and then just left the house. He just walked out. He then went and set the girl's body on fire and went across the... Uh, went across the way where he where he wouldn't be noticed and just watched the the scene unfold mm, more of that yeah three days after this murder peter followed a popular local mechanic named rudolph Shear out of a tavern after he had after he had a beer when the cl- when the coast was clear peter attacked him stabbing rudolph 20 times including one to the temple just like the last murder peter hung out until rudolph's body was found just to see the reaction that's this, gonna take a lot of strength to put one through the temple. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Plus, this guy kills men, women, children. That's kind of odd, isn't it? I think it's, it's a different just, mo. Was this the first guy he's killed? Well, it's yeah, it's the first one he's killed. He attacked that he other attacked guy. Attacked the guy, but this is the first guy he's killed. Yeah. And so, do, oh, do we think he's getting off on the guys dying too? I think it's just all about creating I mean, I this you're chaos. You're getting off on and, killing a, a swan. You're getting off on probably killing a dude yeah. as well. It's just different. I mean, you don't see that most of the time. Yeah, I think it's all just about the blood. Yeah. Yeah. God damn. So after going on this four year long spree of, of crime, Peter figured it was time to relax and let his tolerance for adrenaline build back up. So he decided to take a summer vacation. And we're going to take a piss vacation. <laughs> we'll be right back. We like to drink beer, a lot of it. After a long night of drinking and talking crime and conspiracies, There's nothing that wakes us up and gets us ready to start the day better than just brew coffee. With a great selection of roast levels to choose from, you're guaranteed to find one that suits your style. Small batch roasted to highlight the unique features of each coffee bean, Just Brew Coffee caters to both casual and hardcore coffee drinkers alike. Since 2010, Just Brew Coffee has worked tirelessly to perfect the roasting process and technique, which has resulted in seriously delicious, always flavorful, and never bitter tasting coffee. If you're already drinking JBC, raise your mug. If you're not, raise your standards. Check them out in social media and remember, they roast, you just brew. Check out their new online store at youjustbrew.com and up your coffee game today. 
Use code NECRO15 to receive 15% off your order of two pounds or more. Police didn't think that things had stopped in Dusseldorf just because Peter left for a while. They thought they had caught the murderer when they arrested Johann Strasberg. Strasberg was described by police and doctors as an imbecile, an idiot, and a cretin. <laughs> Not very flattering terms. <laughs> God damn, I wonder if that was in the report. It will, that, that was a, a thing back then, was medical cretinism. Cretin. <laughs> What's the definition of that? It's just anything wrong with you. You're just a cretin. You're a cretin. <laughs> All right. I'm going to look this one up. Stand by. Yeah, I have nothing else to do. <laughs> First definition of cretin. One afflicted with cretinism. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, motherfucker, let's click on cretinism. Uh, usually conge- congenital. How do you say that word? Congenital. Congenital. A usually congenital condition marked by physical physical stunting and intellectual disability and caused by severe hydrothyroidism. So it's developmentally disabled people is what they're making fun of. Jeez. I prefer imbecile or idiot. (laughs) So, I mean, obviously Strasburg was not the, the vampire of Dusseldorf. But he did try to strangle two women on the street from behind with a noose. <laughs> what is going on in Germany over here? He didn't kill anyone. These were attempted murders, and he was easily tracked down because... Because he was an imbecile. <laughs> He's not very good at covering his tracks. Um, but due to the nature of these crimes, the police figured it would be worthwhile to ask him about about the other crimes. It, Strasburg immediately confessed to all of the vampire <laughs> crimes. He got most of the details in the crimes wrong, but the police attributed that to memory loss he had from seizures. And he was an idiot. (laughs) And an imbecile. (laughs) (laughs) What he did get right, the police thought was valid because Strasburg couldn't read. But, I mean, I'm sure people in town were talking about what was happening. You know what I mean? Strasburg was charged and sent to an insane asylum for the rest of his life, so... He was I mean, done. to be fair, he did try to strangle some ladies, right? Yeah, I so. mean, he d- he needed to be where he was at, but... They got him for the wrong reasons, but yeah. they got him in the right place. So, and you would think that that would be great for Peter, but he didn't see it that way. Um, even though he didn't want to get caught, he didn't want someone else taking credit for his crimes. <laughs> and that's, that's, that's my narcissist. cum, motherfucker. That ain't your cum. That's typical with stuff, though. I mean, when we get into BTK, we'll see... That in um you know what kind of what leads to him getting caught is that that arrogance of mm. not wanting some that because that guy was getting ready to write a book about him and he didn't like that yeah. he well, didn't like somebody else talking about it or getting something wrong he was so proud of what he did yeah well and not to not to go back to Ed Kemper again but um he used to love to tell the stories about what he did. Right. You know, and it was a routine and a bit yeah. for him to tell the stories. Like he didn't, he wouldn't want someone else to take credit for that. Like he, right. he liked having that, the floor for that. And I know too, with BTK in the beginning or somewhere in there, either the, I want to say like the third set of the third murder he did, they arrested somebody else, third or fourth, but they arrested somebody else for it. They didn't attribute it to him at first. And he immediately sent in a letter. <laughs> so the police was like, Nope, you got the wrong guy. That was or that, <laughs> that was guy me. doesn't have my mad skills. Yeah. He couldn't have pulled this did he off. Sign it with his cum so that they know for sure. Like, oh yeah, that's true. This guy's cum is legit. <laughs> this is what we've been finding on that swan's neck. So yeah, I mean that's a big thing with uh with a lot of these guys is just they want well, that's why they, they want watch, the credit. They go back to watch it because yeah. it's, they want to see their work. They're they're full of themselves. They get off on 100%. that. One hundred percent. So when Peter returned to Dusseldorf in August from his vacation, he went on a crime spree that would just completely dwarf his previous ones. On August fourteenth, nineteen twenty nine, Peter was walking around the, the Dusseldorf Zoo, and I mean, you could only imagine what the what the hell was going through his mind <laughs> looking at all these animals he back a, when i was a boy <laughs> and i was catching dogs out in these <laughs> this guy has been banging animals since he was 13 yeah it really is nuts the whole yeah the whole thing could you imagine just walking around and what's going on in this dude's mind at a zoo <laughs> at this point his cock's just spitting out dry <laughs> 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 Just air puffs coming out like he's nothing left. 
while he was there, he met a servant girl named Maria Hahn. And they made plans to go on a date the following day. Peter took her to a beer garden and then out to dinner. And after dinner, he led Maria to a secluded area and strangled her unconscious. Then when she woke up, he did it again. Then when she came to again, he stabbed her in the throat with the scissors. And um, when blood started to flow, he put his mouth to the wound and just drank until he vomited. Until he vomited. <laughs> so the, you know, to a point where he couldn't take it yeah. anymore. Oh, my gosh. I mean, to be fair, that German beer does make you do some crazy things. Well, sometimes, so. <laughs> also true. It's very fair. Well, this didn't, this didn't kill her. And as she started to plead with Peter to stop, he stabbed her in the chest and then multiple times in the head until she died. <sighs> and that was the thing about with that drinking the blood. Like, he had figured out with these scissors a way to, like, poke the right way to get blood to shoot so he could drink it easier. After he, she was dead, he rolled her body over into a ditch and then covered her with some branches. The next morning, Peter wasn't so careful about his clothing and his wife noticed blood stains on his clothes. So he figured he'd better hide Maria's body better to not get caught. Cause he figured if a dead body shows up and then she saw him with blood and, you know, put two and two together. You mean she'd be better than Jerry Brudos' wife who <laughs> yeah. just ignored all of that and the mounted tit that was in their house? <laughs> That's that. I think there's some willful blindness going on here, too. But she's also a convicted murderer, so. It's true. She's probably getting off on this as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, who knows? She's involuntarily coming to all of this as well. <laughs> so after work, Peter took Maria's body out to a cornfield and buried her body and just loving what he was doing the whole time. He said he... I think it was, he said that he was just like laughing out loud to himself. Just whistle while you work, motherfucker. Well, he learned from the best with that dog fucking catcher. (laughs) Just laugh and enjoy it. (laughs) Just love love your life. (laughs) Dude, that was creepy. (laughs) Wish we had a sound machine, like a soundboard. We could have recorded that and just play (laughs) that randomly. You can. We just taped it. (laughs) We need a soundboard, though. I want, like, button one to be Dave Creepy Laugh. (laughs) Um, A few weeks later, Peter returned to where he had buried Maria with the intent on digging up her body and nailing her to a tree crucifixion style. And we're going one level up again. (laughs) Her body was too heavy, so he just buried her again. Um, But the only problem was is that he just couldn't let it go like this because if people didn't know what he had done, then this whole thing was just a waste. There was... There was no purpose in this if he couldn't, you know, see people's reactions. Hmm. So in November, he sent multiple letters to newspapers giving them the exact location of the body. And uh, and he made sure to include that he was the real vampire of Dusseldorf, that they got the wrong guy. And just because it took Peter until November to send that letter, it didn't mean that he wasn't committing murders in between. The same week of as the Maria Hahn murder, Peter found 26-year-old Gertrude Schulte as she was going to meet some friends for an afternoon out. He walked up to Gertrude and, and introduced himself and started to hit on her. And as she was walking away, Peter just flat out said that they should just go somewhere and have sex. Maria turned around to him and said, quote, I'd rather die. And then Peter screamed back at her, quote, then you shall die. And he stabbed her in the back with a knife so hard that it broke the blade. Fuck. Yeah. She survived, but yeah. Holy cow. Can you imagine just that too? Like some asshole and you're like, yeah, I'd rather die than fuck you. And he's like, yeah, well. Guess what, honey? Then you shall die. (laughs) Fucking nuts. Risky move right on the street here. Yeah, broad daylight. daylight. How do you, so he stabbed her so hard that the blade broke. Did that break off in her, you think? Or did, it, like, he pulled out and it, like, fell apart? I'm assuming it hit bone and then... And broke. she still lived. Yeah. That's wild. Well, especially back you then, right? Right, and you can't... Like, the blood loss? Oh, he probably came so hard. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> one, would, one would think. <laughs> Even though this didn't kill her, there was something that he, he really, really liked about stabbing someone and running away. So he did it three more times in one night on August 21st. The first two that night were uh, were women, one who was stabbed in the back, similar to Gertrude, and the other was just a silent stab in the ribs as he was walking by or oh. just stuck it in her side. Oh. Mm. Yeah. 
the third was a drunk guy that was laying in a ditch. Uh, Peter stabbed him in the back and then hid by his uh, EMTs came to save his life. Sounded like there was a lot of that going on, too, from when I was reading about this. Just people in Germany just sleeping in ditches and on benches, drunk at night and stuff. Mm. Just, Instead of driving home, they just sleep outside. <laughs> just yeah. leave the bar and fall asleep <laughs> outside. <laughs> All right. Well, it wasn't a great time in Germany, so. That's true, too. After World War One, Yeah. Recession and everything. So that, that's probably likely. On August 23rd, Peter went to the Dusseldorf Fair searching for a victim. Peter spotted 14-year-old Louise Linden and 5-year-old Gertrude Honecker. When the girls left the fair together, Peter followed, and when he caught up with them, he asked Louise if she would buy a pack of cigarettes for him. She was like she was hesitant about leaving uh, the Gertrude with her alone with him since she was five years old and he was a fucking complete stranger <laughs> right stranger danger stranger Why danger man need a, a little kid to buy him cigarettes yeah that should be a red flag um but he assured her that he would watch her watch gertrude while she bought the cigarettes as soon as louise left he took gertrude behind some bushes strangled her and then slit her throat when Luis came back, he took her to the same bushes and slit her throat so deep that he almost decapitated her. Peter drank some blood from her neck and then just rolled over and laid there for a while in between the two bodies, just kind of taking in what he had done. <sighs> Soaking up the ambiance. Yeah. Laying in blood and semen. In between a five-year-old and a 14-year-old. Yeah, right. Or a 14-year-old, yeah. God, this might be the worst one we've done to date. I think it is. I mean, it's the most kids it's I think really we've covered, bad. right? Yeah. It's fucked up. That's bad. Yeah, he's, uh, I, I don't think you could get much worse than him, really. Oh, we'll I mean, find murder- someone <laughs> at some point. <laughs> Leave it up to us. So with police nowhere close to being able to figure out who was, uh, who was behind all these crimes, Peter ramped up this spree. His next victim was Sophie Rugel who was riding her bike when Peter ran out from a side street, grabbed her off the bike, and hit her in the head with a chisel. (laughs) Now he's using a chisel. Yeah, he was just, that's the thing. He liked to just try out everything. I think that caused confusion, too, because it's like, yeah, if you had somebody using the same weapon, you could kind of start to piece it together. But (laughs) This guy's got no pattern. Yeah. Men, women, children, axe handles, the other side of the axe. He just leaves cum everywhere. That's it. Very, very true. <laughs> but he's probably not leaving cum everywhere because he's not—he's coming in his pants. Right. Mm-hmm. That's why he wears those suits. <laughs> so he knocked her. He knocked her out. And it, it didn't kill her. And the next was Maria Redouche. He attacked her at midnight, but people heard her when she started screaming, and Peter took off. It, this was the only time that he was actually chased by people. Like, no one got, like, a solid look at him, like an eyewitness mm. look, but people chased after him. He got away, but... So, with this failed attempt and getting chased at, or getting chased after, Peter decided he would need something that would just be fast and do enough damage with one blow, and that's when he started leaving the house with a hammer. Now we're going to a hammer. Yep. His first victim with a hammer was Ida Reuter. He met her at a train station and convinced her to go on a walk with him in the woods. As it got dark, she asked him to take her back, to which he said fine. As soon as they were walking back, Peter pulled out the hammer and hit her in the right temple, fracturing her skull. He then dragged her body to a more secluded area, raped her, and then beat her to death with the hammer. That's a rough way to go, oh. man, getting beat to death with a hammer. Yeah. Well, based on, what was that? The bonus episode we did, the Luca one, we talked about, what was it? The two hammers, three hammers, um, one guy. Was, what ugh. the fuck was that video that inspired Luca? I can't think of the name of it now. And we don't need to say it because yeah. we don't. Um, three guys, one hammer. Or something is that what it was? Yeah. Something. And you guys have, you've seen it. No. And you haven't either. No, I don't want to see that. And you haven't seen the Luca video. No. So I'm the only one who watched either. both of them. Yeah. And I'm the only one who regrets watching both of them. <laughs> yeah. Um. A few people actually commented on the, that Luca episode, and they wouldn't watch either of those videos. They were like, I'm, they're fucked up as it is. Or they were like, we're into that, that gory shit, but we don't want to watch that. No. And nope. I don't no recommend thanks. watching it. But anyways, the Hammer video is the most disturbing thing I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. That's Which, what and I've that's heard. what's inspired Luca yeah. in his video. But the, the Hammer one is disgusting. That's what I've heard. Everybody that's seen it immediately afterwards said they regretted watching yeah, it. Yeah, don't. It's not. It's not worth it. 
What about two guys, one horse? I've not seen that. <laughs> well, then. Did you just make that up for a second? For <laughs> no, this. No, Dave, you mean two girls, one cop. It's a poop video. <laughs> That's what you're thinking of. There's that video that got Mr. <clears throat> Mr. Hands. Is that the video? Where a guy lets the horse fuck him and he just ruptures his insides and mm. kills him. Oh, I've you know heard of that. Mr. Hands. Is that what I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Ugh. That's not a smart. Like, you know what, though? <laughs> Probably still better to watch in the hammer video. I don't want to see hammers. So, but you'd rather watch a horse fuck a man and pull out his intestines. <laughs> I don't. I don't watch any of it. I don't want to see any of this stuff. <laughs> so nobody watch any of these videos we've just discussed. <laughs> it's horrible. This world's a sick place. Man. I'm starting to think the internet's filled with bad things. <laughs> yeah, there's some gross shit on the internet. It's not good. So shortly after. Peter basically did the same thing to a woman named Elizabeth Dorier. Peter followed her for a mile before he pulled her behind some bushes and beat her to death with the hammer. He wasn't able to kill everyone that he attacked with his hammer. Uh, One woman survived a quick single blow from the hammer, and another shortly after survived when his hammer broke, and it sent it flying. The head of it went flying back into the woods, and he couldn't find it. So that's why, Hmm. like... For whatever reason, this hammer was, like, important enough to him that after he, like, swung back and it broke, after, like, the coast was clear, he went back looking for the for the head of the hammer Damn. for whatever reason. Peter's final murder was five-year-old Gertrude Alberman. One day, as her parents were having a distracted conversation in a park, Peter grabbed her and walked and walked her over a mile away where he stabbed her with a pair of scissors over 50 times. Peter thought about burning her body, but this time he decided to do something different. He carried her body to an abandoned factory about a mile away. There, he covered her body with a mound of garbage and put a makeshift cross on top. Two days later, he sent a letter to the local newspaper and the police notifying them where the body was. When he knew the letters would have been delivered, Peter again hid and watched the scene and, again, audibly laughed to himself the whole time. Man. That one is particular. I mean, 50 Can you times, picture that scene? Like him just sitting there laughing to himself? As people are freaking out, seeing yeah. a dead five-year-old. Jesus. Well, I'm just thinking, too, about the parents. Like, you're sitting there having a conversation. <clears throat> yeah. Next thing sure. you know, your kid, your five-year-old's gone. Yeah. And every parent, you think the worst in a situation where you can't find your kid. Yeah. This is the worst. Yeah. This is as bad as it gets. Yeah. Yeah, it's a scary, uh, scary situation. Holy shit. After this murder, Peter took a break from crime for three months. He's on sabbatical. (laughs) Yeah. Starting in February of 1930, he began a string of assaults that lasted until his arrest in May. Maria Budlick arrived in Dusseldorf by train on May 14th, 1930. An unnamed man offered to help Maria find her way, but she became concerned when this guy attempted to lead her through a woody area of a park. The two started arguing when another man approached them, asking whether Maria was being bothered by this by this guy. When she said yes, the man who she had been arguing with just walked away with no issue, but the guy that came to her aid was Peter Curtin. Mm, what terrible luck. Yeah. The creep in shining armor. Mm. Coming us <laughs> Peter somehow convinced Maria to come back to an apartment that he had been renting with him when she refused to sleep with him peter just walked her out with no issues he led her to an area that he knew would be quiet and he raped her but he didn't kill her and just let her go and that was because he had been seen people had seen him at the train station Uh, with her earlier on maria didn't report this attack to the police immediately and instead she wrote about it in a letter to one of her friends the friend immediately connected the attack with the uh, with the vampire of Dusseldorf crimes and convinced her to tell the police. After reporting the crime, she was able to lead the police straight to Peter's apartment. Although Peter wasn't home when Maria and the police searched his property, he spotted them in the hallway as he was coming home and took off. So he caught a... It's like seven. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Knowing that his identity was now known to the police and was obviously a suspect in the vampire Dusseldorf crimes. Peter confessed to his wife that he had raped Maria Budlick and that because of his previous convictions, he may receive 15 years in prison. After confessing to this rape, he left his house and didn't come back until May 23rd. 
when he did come back on May 23rd, he confessed to his wife that he was the vampire of Dusseldorf. Guess what, doll? <laughs> and from stuff that I read, he just said it real basic. Like, And then when she got upset, he said something along the lines of, well, I... Like, I shouldn't have told you any of it. Like, like she was burdening him by getting upset yeah, at yeah. the fact. I shouldn't have told you this. I'm yeah, out of here. Pretty much. Well, yeah. You killed that guy too, honey. Yeah, you killed that guy. <laughs> so she contacted the police the following day. And there's some things out there that say that he told her to collect the reward money. And then I've seen other things that said that he didn't. That he just was mm. basically like didn't give a fuck. Was just more more burdened by her reaction than anything. <laughs> Poor woes <laughs> me. Yeah. So in the information provided to the police, Peter's wife explained that that although she had known that Peter had been repeatedly imprisoned in the past, she wasn't aware that he was committing any of these murders. She then told them about how he confessed to the Dusseldorf murders and that he was um and that he was willing to confess to police. So furthermore, he was to meet her outside the St. Rockus church later that day and that afternoon. Peter was arrested at gunpoint. Boom. Yep. There it is. Finally. And I know there was a quote, too, where he said to his wife, uh, like, I didn't think you'd turn me in that fast. Because it, ne- it was the next day that mm. she that they set this up. This and, yeah. Sorry, Peter. <laughs> Peter spent most of his trial trying not to uh, ejaculate, hearing all the stuff he did said back to him. I think uh, we have some audio of Core TV. They were in the courthouse. Some audio. Of oh, him. really? Yeah, it's uh, it's exclusive. Exclusive audio. Core TV audio of Peter listening to uh, testimony about what he did. <laughs> yeah, that was. Uh, wow, that's probably a distracting uh, trial. <laughs> <laughs> over and over again. Yeah, he's just sitting at the table. <laughs> Holy cow. Only Court TV was around back then. <laughs> Is Court TV still around now? We talked about this last time, I think. They rebranded Did we not it. just have this episode? It became True TV. Yeah. Oh, is that what that is? Okay. Yeah. Right. What? I thought, was it the same I episode? I thought Spike became True TV. I don't know. No, Spike became um, Paramount. Paramount. Oh, okay. We legit had this exact conversation. <laughs> that sounds familiar. I think it was that. on this episode. Huh. Oh, when we prove it. If not, we're like dumbasses because we've already talked about this a couple (laughs) weeks ago. Court TV, I think, became true TV. Because it's all the same shit. They show cops and what's that new show? Live PD? Yeah. Which is cops, except it's live. live, Except every time I see it, it's a rerun. (laughs) So it's not live. Mm. The the thing, too, with this is, man, just hearing it back was getting them going. But they gave him this the full treatment. I mean, they had him in a cage and everything for this. And he loved every second of it. I mean, they were treating him. He was in a cage for the trial? Yeah, they were treating him like he was a monster, and he mm. loved it. He's fucking getting off on yeah. that. Yeah. Um, and after 10 days, he was found guilty and sentenced to death. On the evening of July 1st, 1931, Peter received his last meal. He ordered Wiener Schnitzel, a bottle of white wine, and fried potatoes. It's like the most German meal you could ever order. <laughs> right. Uh, he ate the- Minus the wine. Yeah. It should have been beer. Yeah. He ate the entire meal before requesting a second helping, and the prison staff decided to to give him seconds. Oh, he's a nice guy. I'm, I'm surprised they didn't that tell him to weird. fuck off. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can I get a dog in here to fuck, too? <laughs> yeah, Would you Jesus, mind? man. At 6 o'clock in the morning on July 2nd, Peter Curtin was beheaded by guillotine. He walked unassisted to the guillotine by the prison psychiatrist and a priest, and shortly before his head was placed on the guillotine... T- Peter turned to the psychiatrist and asked the famous question, quote, tell me, after my head is chopped off, will I still be able to hear, at least for a moment, the sound of my own blood gushing from the stump of my neck? That would be the pleasure to end all pleasures. <laughs> yeah, buddy. So as this man is about to be killed, he's thinking of how he can get off one more time. Mm-hmm. Yep. Because if his brain's not connected, Dave, can he still? I don't on? think. I don't can think so. Well, he might have the moment of consciousness, but he can't transmit the message to his pee-pee. Unless, <laughs> unless the build-up to it is enough that mm. he comes before the choppy choppies. Mm. Well, we talked about this in one of our past episodes whenever we talked about beheading during the French Revolution. Yeah. There was an assassin that was beheaded, 
And uh, one of the doctors wanted to see if there was a reaction. So he picked the guy's head up and smacked, <laughs> smacked him in the face. And he got pit like visibly like, yeah, he why appeared the f- to yeah, be angry. Yeah. Like, why the fuck did you just slap me? That's I, wild. Uh, that's but they're a- not connected anymore. So can he still come? <laughs> <laughs> can you come to your own death? That's the question coming mm, out of this episode. That's the question. I mean, I don't think so. But I mean, I'm for sh- I'm, at least in his mind for 10 seconds or 20 seconds however it lasts he at least wanted to hear his blood flowing he got what he wanted god damn this is quite a tale Mm, yeah uh when they asked if he had any last words he just smiled at him and said no and he had a belly belly full of schnitzel and white wine (laughs) he's probably probably hung over and full and probably had to take a shit so he was happy just to die they have to deal with that mess coming and shitting at the same time (laughs) that's the story of uh peter curtin yeah, real fucking winner. Yeah, he's something else. It's just, uh, it'll be hard to top this guy for just sheer, yeah, even, sheer even, vileness. Even Albert Fish, he comes to mind as being something, oh. but, it's, but even, I mean, he's a really vile person, but not stabbing a five year old 50 times and stuff. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And then it's just this guy who took this shit to a whole different level. Yeah, I think there's an unmatched level of brutality going on here. Yeah. And there's nothing even, there's nothing charming about this guy either. No, no. You know no. what I mean? Like Kemper has this kind Redeeming of. Redeeming quality. Yeah, this charm that kind of gets you to drop your right. guard and yeah. kind of forget sometimes about what exactly he did. Obviously, Ted Bundy had the charm. You know, some of those guys have that charm. This guy, there's like this no, guy, yeah. nothing about this guy that was likable he's not a likable human being and then when you see a picture of him he looks just like fucking hitler (laughs) he's more dislikable it's not great no no so before we get into a international domino's pizza review um ian you got anything else on piece of shit curtain no no dave you got anything else on this one no no terrible a lot of wiener schnitzel and cum and i do like the wiener schnitzel though I don't think I've ever had Wiener schnitzel. Really? I don't think I have either. I would absolutely try it, and I think it'd be delicious. I've just never had threaded it. pork cutlet. Yeah. Sounds good. I was in Germany for like a week, and I don't remember a single You were in meal. Germany for a week, and you didn't have any Wiener I don't know. Schnitzel. I don't know. I was drinking the whole time. I really <laughs> don't remember a meal. It was all about the booze and the battlefields, and I was there for that World War II trip. Oh, I do. One other thing I want to mention is I know you posted the teaser pic the other day. You can go to the Ripley's Museum in Wisconsin and see uh, Curtin's head on display there, split in half. Oh, that's right. That was the teaser pic from yeah. this past Friday. Yeah. I like so to Ripley's see that. Museum, where is it? The Ripley's Museum, where? It's in Wisconsin. Uh, it says that the uh, Ripley's Museum in Wisconsin Dells. So Wisconsin like, Dells. So there, and that's where his head is on display. His head's hanging there in a display so case. So, for those of you that thought that might have been a victim that we posted on Friday, no, that was actually fucking Peter Curtin's head. Yeah, super creepy. Yeah, really. And weird. we'll post a few more uh, pictures of it um, later this week that I got. You know, we can shell those out. All right, Dave. Anything else on Peter Curtin? No, nope, that was it. Go All check right. out his head. So one of our uh, listeners, Stephanie recently uh, took a trip over to Iceland and said they had billboards up for Domino's <laughs> that said that they were the number one pizza in Iceland. What? Domino's pizza, number one in Iceland. And I was like, well, we would we would really like a review on that. If you're going over there, you might as well try. Let's try some international pizza. So she sent a picture. The picture looks about as good as, as what we had. Nothing special. I know we didn't post it. So, But anyways, she said, not going to lie, it was fantastic. I said, bullshit, you're shit-faced. <laughs> <laughs> she said, stone cold sober, it was delicious. What kind uh-huh. of pizza? Pepperoni mushroom, Dave. That's your kind of pizza. Right. That's what we had. We had pepperoni mushroom and sausage. Yeah. So not like rotten fish or something like <laughs> they're in Iceland? It looks the same as what it we had. Looks, yeah. It looks it's okay. like a regular Domino's pizza. I'm sorry, I'm kicking tables. She said it was really good. Um, she also said that it cost twice as much there as it does over here. So she's thinking maybe they have better ingredients. I don't believe that either. <laughs> I believe they come frozen from the Domino <laughs> shit headquarters. Wow. Wherever that is. Either way, <laughs> I've officially dubbed her our uh, um, chief. Uh, what, what was the words I used? Our uh, official Domino's bureau chief. So hopefully, Stephanie, you uh, go to a few different Domino's locations in and about the uh, 
Ohio area or across the country and give us different reviews. We're not going to believe you if you say they're good because you said <laughs> Iceland's was awesome. I still maintain you might have been drunk, but she says she wasn't and she said they were really good. Hmm. So anyways, if you find yourself in Iceland, apparently their Domino's pizza is better. I'm not buying it. I give mm-hmm. Stephanie a thumbs down on that. Review. Wow, <laughs> that's harsh. <laughs> well, you're not her favorite anymore. <laughs> All right, Ian, what shout outs we got tonight? I've got a bunch of them tonight. Um, for iTunes, we have Ms. Frizz, Power Stroke, Luna Molina, Danny, Lisa112, and uh, and Lauren Sim. <clears throat> Lauren Sim. And then for YouTube, I have H.R. Selver, Car- Catherine Von Dutch, Tiffany Ryan, and Nicole G. They hopped over there and... Uh, we're defending us. <laughs> awesome. YouTube. Good for them. So thank you for fighting the good fight. And I don't know how to comment on YouTube because I'm not the greatest with social media. So I couldn't, <laughs> couldn't figure that We're out. working so, on it, folks. Yeah. We're getting to get I'm going to get on YouTube and anonymously make comments. On that. <laughs> so what, what are the, what's that called when like the athletes have their fake Twitter accounts? You know what I'm talking about? That's going to be awesome. <laughs> Dave's going to manage our fake accounts. He's going to defend us. And Actually, you forget- we don't- I don't think we need to with the, the followers we have fucking mm-hmm. sticking up for us. And you forget to log out of your real account before you post <laughs> and you look like an asshole. I just resigned <laughs> with the Atlanta Falcons for four years. <laughs> Motherfucker, that's your fake account. <laughs> so thank you for for the reviews. And thank you for the people that stuck up for us. Yeah. We appreciate that. We had some of that with the flat earth. We'll take over YouTube one of these days. <clears throat> yeah. All right, Dave, what do you got for us? From Instagram, I love taco trucks. I also love taco trucks. Who Excellent. Doesn't? Fucking good. Jess Browder, Lauren Sim, and then from Twitter, Goat E, Alexis Three, and then also Nick Z from Columbus. Thanks for listening, guys. Yeah. Also, a, an apology out to Mung Bean on Instagram. Uh, apparently, when we gave them a shout out, um, we might have been extremely drunk and we referred to her as a he. We apologize. Sorry about so, that. Here's an extra bonus shout out for you. Mm-hmm. And in all fairness, our Necro account was not following. So we following that uh, Mung Bean. So we could not see their photos to know what who she was. We made it right. I love these people from Australia. They all look fun. Yeah. It looks cool over there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We have some good listeners. Yeah. And Mung Bean was cool about it, but I felt we should give her an extra special shout out because we were unfair to her the first time. So there we go. All right. That's everyone. This was a good week for shout outs. We had a lot yeah. of people. Mm hmm. Yeah. Keep up those five star reviews and send us your yeah. Domino's reviews. I want to keep. I want to see yeah. more of that. Thank you to Stephanie for going to Iceland. She went just simply to try the pizza, <laughs> so that's awesome that she went all the way out there just to try the pizza. Do they have any better cuisine in Iceland than eating Domino's? Pizza? In all fairness, I'm the one who told her to try it. She said she would do it just for us. She I'm- wasted a whole Icelandic meal just for us. <laughs> Well, I was in Mexico this weekend. Domino's pizzas were $5, I saw. And? So I wouldn't pay a dollar for that piece of <laughs> shit. You were in fucking Mexico and you didn't try the, the, the pizza. Not a chance. That's in, You should have absolutely tried the pizza. For five pesos? You could have got... Come on. Five pesos. <laughs> Anyways. You guys ready for a cool down beer? Cheers. Yep. <laughs>